Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I recently heard that European Space Agency astronauts have been urging the development of an independent spacecraft for the European Space Agency and I am supportive of that endeavor. Uh, so I have uh, come up with adapted and very old design that I think everybody who heard that the European Space Agency might want its own independent spacecraft aside from what NASA or Russia could offer would have immediately thought of this uh, because this is the, the old idea from the European Space Agency, if you will, the Hermes spacecraft. So uh, I have adapted it. I'll explain the fairings in a sec here. But it was sort of like Dinosaur. It was actually designed in the late 50s, I think, early 60s kind of thing. So way before, I mean, it's like if they were going to compete with Mercury and such, uh, that kind of time frame, or Dinosaur. Uh, Dinosaur was an American program, the X-20, that uh, looks somewhat similar. Uh, I have made some changes, however, and uh, adapted it a little bit better, especially for use on the Ariane 6 rocket. Uh, first thing is that the spacecraft would originally have had a trunk and that trunk would have solar panels and would be disposable. I didn't like that idea and that's because it is a very expensive part that you are going to be disposing of because unlike the trunk of uh, say Dragon 2 or something like that, uh, the crew would have to pass through it, uh, right? The docking port is necessarily on the tail and so the crew would have to pass through the thing and so it's a functional airlock and you're gonna be discarding it for re-entry so I don't like that idea a whole lot. Uh, so we're going with fuel cells instead of the solar panels in this case though I could think of like flip out solar panels from the body or something like that. That's possible. The second innovation if you will is that as I understand it European A Space Agency is developing a Berta engine, which is sort of a tug engine for Ariane 6. It's about 3.5 kilonewtons right now, it may be further develop, developed, but it's hypergolic and it would be the perfect engine for this. So I've put two uh, facsimile engines, they're not called Berta right now, in fact they're a little bit big. I made the space for 3.5 kilonewtons, so they're sort of clipping the wall there. But anyway, they'll give us the basic idea there, MH and Mon 3, which I assume that the European, European Space Agency would use. And that's what we're using here. We're carrying 813.6 liters of Mon 3 and 810.4 liters of MH. And so you mass that out, you need about two tons. I don't know how big this tug that they're developing for Ariane 6 would be, but if it's about two tons, you could probably just take the tanks from that and put it in here. Um, it needs the space, of course. Uh, the space would be occupying this back end here. Basically, if you extend this line here out and then across to there, that's that's the volume you need for those uh, engines. And that will give you about 445 meters per second without cargo. Uh, actually, I haven't put the landing gear on. It might be a little bit less than that, but it'll be enough for LEO operations, lower orbit operations. If you're wondering what the big difference between this and the Taurus space plane is, the Taurus space plane is meant to be able to capture around the moon and return from the moon. It's meant to uh, take the place of Orion, potentially. And this is not. Uh, so the, the Taurus space plane is much heavier than this. It has a bigger back end uh, with larger tanks because those are actually the OMS tanks from the shuttle and the much larger AG-10-190 engines, which have 26.4 kilonewtons, not 3.5. But these days, people are content with having orbital engines that are just RCS, so I think this will be good enough. Uh, seating for four was arranged uh, when I did this in Blender, though uh, technically there's some uh, sort of cargo area. If you really wanted to put uh, extra seats in, you could. I have allotted... Uh, oh, we actually need to put the seats in. I'll do that later. Uh, that won't be too much, but yeah, so you're looking at basic orbital operations, nothing fancy, basically like the shuttle did, except not much cargo. Uh, I mean, if you want to carry cargo, you could, but it's not going to carry that much. This is mainly for crew, so it's like Dragon 2 in crew mode. Uh, okay, and so it is heavier than Dragon 2, obviously, because it is a space plane, uh, but not not too much, not too much heavier. So yeah, it's nice in that respect. I've made it as trim as I possibly could. And yes, it's got the Hermes look with the vertical stabilizers outboard. Uh, they might need to be a little bit bigger, I'm not sure. That'll require testing. Uh, so 
other innovations. Uh, well, we mount it like this. There's a special mount point, and it uh, it needs to be able to decouple on both sides, and that's for the abort system. We have an abort system. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, anyway, so it'll need to be able to decouple off of this side. That's not possible in Kerbal Space Program, so we can't actually test the abort here right now. So, because a single part, I'll have to make a two-part decoupler. There are other complications on the fairing. So, uh, this goes here. And it is meant to disrupt the aerodynamics of the space plane so it doesn't cause problems for the launcher. Uh, obviously, ESA is going to have to wind tunnel this business and CFD this business because I'm not sure that I've got it right as far as doing that. Um, could you put the space plane on without it actually causing a problem for the launcher? Possibly, but there are other benefits to that. This reduces drag uh, because otherwise uh, you'll need some fairing at the bottom in order to uh, accommodate the thing because otherwise you can have a flat top here or a conic top and that's not really nice. And here we've got the escape system. The escape system is actually built in to this upper fairing. It is central line here. The SRBs are here and so they come with the fairing. Uh, the fairing mass right now, I think I had it at 1.6 tons, so it's a fairly hefty uh, thing to and has the SRBs in. I haven't configured those SRBs though because that's the other problem. Uh, Kerbal Space Program won't have allow you to have a single part that has two different thrust transforms, and we need one to actually separate off the fairing. So if we put another thrust transform, which is the escape SRBs, then that will conflict. I think. Uh, we won't be able to activate both uh, uh, at different times because obviously we don't want the SRBs to activate when we're just decoupling the fairing normally. So anyway, uh, the, the bottom plate here will decouple there and the SRBs would fire in the case of an abort. And then the fairings, uh, then the bottom plate and the fairings would separate from the spacecraft at which point it could make a landing or splash down. Like, I mean, the, probably not a splash down, probably they'll have to try and bail out uh, they can bail out the rear end, which is probably better. Uh, they won't hit anything. So, yeah. It depends on how badly it's spinning or whatever. Hopefully it can control itself at that point. Okay, so that is the idea. It's a weird looking thing on top the way I have it, but the idea... The, the thing that made me interested in doing this was actually the escape system. I thought that, that was an interesting thing. And if I had money, I would patent it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's an uh, escape system built into fairing. I don't know if uh, people have done that or not, but yeah. It's an interesting one. There's only a limited number of use cases where that would be possible. And this is one of them. So yeah. Okay, well, I need to test it out. I haven't launched a spacecraft yet, so I don't know what might be wrong with it. Reentry is a whole other thing. But we're going to launch it, and we're going to see if it at least does what I want it to do up to orbit. Maybe I've got the aerodynamics wrong, and uh, Fair Mirror Space Research, the mod that gives us realistic aerodynamics, is going to have a cow with this. I don't know. All right. Um, it is capable of control without crews, so that's good. I should note that the Ariane 6 with two boosters is very powerful for this particular purpose. However, we do need to potentially get to the International Space Station orbit or something like that to rendezvous with a station in that orbit or something like that. And we're launching from Kourou, but so we need a hefty inclination change on launch. And also the Ariane 6, well, it's uh, got an interesting flight profile, let's put it that way. So. Uh, we might need more than I think we need, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do need to make sure that we launch steeply, but altogether it is quite a lot of Delta V for just getting into low Earth orbit. Alright, so SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And that's why I have the orbit info there, I really just need the inclination. We'll try and get to the ISS orbit. Okay. That's active. We'll set roll to 180 and heading, I think 35 might do. Some of the things that we need to test here is the fairing decoupling, the RCS on the spacecraft. 
we can't test the abort system, unfortunately. I might configure it to just do the abort system, given that I can't do the normal flight and the abort system at the same time for the reasons I cited in the VAB. But, yeah, we will test what we can test, eventually. For my own purposes, I'm not that interested in the Hermes spacecraft because it doesn't get beyond low Earth orbit, but... Or, I'll call this Hermes 2 because it's substantially different. Apropos some of the comments I've seen on Twitter in relation to this, and other things, I should know that it's probably best not to put all your eggs in one basket anyway. Uh, some people are making the same mistake as the, peop the space shuttle proponents made in the early 80s and actually late 70s as well, that the space shuttle would solve everything, that it was revolutionary. It was revolutionary. It was probably a little bit too far ahead of its time, in fact. And it would be able to replace all launchers. So, I mean, and for a time it did, uh, until Challenger. But it is good to have backups. It's not necessary to scrap everything else uh, just because one launcher is really awesome. <laughs> That's leave it at that. Um, it is good to have other options. And now we have residual roll because I haven't put anything to control roll on this stage. I'm sure they have something to control roll, but I don't have it right now. It's not a huge problem. And as soon as we jettison the fairings, we could use the RCS on the spacecraft to fix it. In fact, um, one, one idea I had was actually keeping the fairings on the spacecraft in order to have the solar panels built into them, even though we'd be carrying the launch escape system with it. But uh, I didn't like that idea because we'd be blocking the RCS ports on the spacecraft, so we wouldn't be able to dock or do anything, so that idea was abandoned. As we are going to abandon these fairings now. Oh, that was cleaner than I thought it was going to be. After all, they're pretty snug against the body there. Some of the colliders come pretty close. Okay, so we can use the spacecraft's own RCS to balance it. We are draining electric charge. Let me test a fuel cell. Okay, that one works. There's two fuel cells. They're redundant. Only one needs to be on. Power drain on it is right now 3. Point, I think it's just 3 kilonewtons. We had 3.1 there, but I think that's partly the rocket. This is heavier than Dragon 2, but it's also not carrying its abort system with it. So, yeah, it's actually much heavier than Dragon 2 would be if Dragon 2 was not carrying its abort system built in. It also has more cabin space, though. But, uh, just for reference, I mean, Dragon 2 would be quite a lot wider in this section here. Um, it's nearly 4 meters at the bottom, whereas this, uh, the height is 2.4 meters, the width is 3 meters. So it's pretty tight. And, of course, once the... Next Ariane, Ariane Next is developed with the Prometheus engines and potentially reusability, then that could take over from this, and maybe that would be an even better fit. Okay, separation and ignition. In more recent photos, it doesn't seem like the Vinci engine has the nozzle extension thing, unless those photos just have it pre-deployed. I think they've gotten rid of the nozzle extension thing and also its stats are a little bit less than what I have here. The 465, they're not quite getting that and maybe that's because they ditched the nozzle extension thing. I'm not sure. Not sure. I'll have to double check on that. It looks like 35 degrees was a pretty good estimate for getting to a 51.6 degree inclination. Yeah, we're only a little bit over in terms of delta-v, so it's not as overpowered for the spacecraft as I thought it was. And we're going down now. Will we make it? I think so, but it's pretty dramatic. 
so if I actually get through re-entry testing with this, uh, I may package this up and put it in with the real spacecraft. I mean, can we call it a real spacecraft? I don't know. Maybe it should be in the experimental one. I don't know which pack I should put it into, but I'll probably release this one. This isn't pass-through capable right now. Right now it's not even crew capable. I'll have to adjust that. That's easy enough. I'll just put the Mark III cockpit in. I'm not going to do anything complicated with it. But it turns out this is just the right launcher for this. <laughs> At least the way I fly it. Okay, we'll let the stage deorbit. Yeah, 73 meters per second left. Okay, can the decoupling work? Decoupling is good. Let's turn the RCS back on. It has four uh, forward-pushing RCS thrusters. A little bit more than necessary, but just a couple minutes, two engines. Technically, if they wanted to be painful about it, they wouldn't need the Berta engines on here. They could just use the RCS, but that would be, in fact, really painful. So now it more or less has the Delta V of something like the Space Shuttle or Dragon 2 or something like that. And does the same kind of job. I'm sure the European Space Agency can do a better flight profile with the Ariane 6, but this will do for now. And we are in orbit. Uh, standby orbit, we would have to get somewhere pretty soon. But there you have it. The Hermes spacecraft. Why not? I mean, if you're going to do something, please don't make it a capsule. That's all. I mean, this is a time to do something interesting. Please do something interesting. Don't make it a capsule. <laughs> okay? Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.